Hello, boys and girls. Today we're going to start a new book. Uh, it is by Clyde Robert Bula Bula. I need to look that up. Let me give everybody the correct pronunciation that their name deserves. The book is called A Lion to Guard Us, and the setting of the book starts out in London. Can you open it up with me in your copy? Mine's kind of old. It's well loved. A Lion to Guard Us. Look at that picture of the door knocker. That's a little foreshadowing, isn't it? All right, we're going to start on page one, chapter one, The Sailor Man. <clears throat> on a February morning in the year 1609, a small, thin-faced man made his way over London Bridge. He wore a leather jacket and a blue wool stocking cap. His clothes were splashed with mud, and mud sucked at his shoes. He could hardly see for the cold rain in his face. He had been looking for Fish Street, and here it was, at the end of London Bridge. Now he was looking for a house on Fish Street, a great stone house not far from the bridge. Here was one with tall chimneys and many windows. It must be the house, he thought. He went around to the back. Sorry. Let me close that down. Thank you. A plump, pretty maid opened the door. Would this be the Trippet house? he asked. She looked at his muddy clothes. What do you want? A word with Mistress Freebold, if she's about. Mistress Freebold? Oh, you mean Annie. You can't see her, said the maid. She's sick a bed. Could you just let her know that there's someone here from America? America, the maid stared into his face. Then you must be... She was gone. He heard her crying out, Amanda! Amanda! <clears throat> Someone came running. Someone cried, Father! And a girl was there. She looked no more than ten or eleven, a pale little thing with great dark eyes. She stopped. She said in bitter disappointment, You're not my father. I shouldn't think so, said the man. Ellie said you were from America, and she thought, I thought, so you're James Freebold's girl, he said. One of them, I'm Amanda. She asked quickly, do you know my father? I do, and I saw him not many weeks ago. We were together in America, in the colony of Virginia. I'm a sailor, you see, and my ship was there. And you saw him? Her eyes were bright again. Was he well? What did he say? He was well enough, for all I could see. He'd built a house in Jamestown. That's the only town there. When my ship sailed, he asked if I'd stop for a word with his family in London. He thinks of you every day. He prays you will all be together before another year is out. Tears came to her eyes. When you see him, will you tell him? I'll not be seeing him again, the man broke in. It's a long, hard voyage to Virginia. I'll not be going back. Oh, she said. Someone was calling, Amanda! You're wanted, he said. I'll take my leave. But you shall, you'll come again? He shook his head. I've told my tale. Good day to you. He left her. He was gone. And she didn't know his name or where to find him again. And there were a hundred things she hadn't asked. She hadn't even said thank you. She took a step after him, but Cook's voice called her back. Amanda! She closed the door. She went down the long, cold hall and into the kitchen. Cook was at the table beating eggs. Her face was red. Her cap was over one eye. Who gave you leave to stand in the door and talk all day? She said. Who was that man? Ellie, the maid, came out of the pantry. Oh, Amanda, was it your father? The door to the back stairs opened. A small boy put his head out. Was it father? He asked. Jimmy, cried Amanda. 
You know you're not to come in here. No, it wasn't, Father. His head disappeared and the door closed. Amanda told Cook and Ellie, It was a sailor man back from Virginia. He saw my father there. He talked to him. Father is well, and he's built a house, and he thinks of us. Cook gave a snort. He does, does he? He thinks of you so much that he sells off and leaves you for three whole years. Oh, that's cruel, said Ellie. Hold your tongue, miss, said Cook. And Amanda, you get back to your work. She went off into the pantry. As soon as Cook was gone, Amanda opened the door to the back stairs. The small boy was sitting on the steps. A smaller girl sat beside him. It wasn't father. It was a sailor man, Amanda said. But he saw father. Just think of that. I'll tell you about it tonight. Will it be a story? Asked the boy. It will be like a story, said Amanda, and shut the door. As we read, I want you to notice that the author uses light as he um, makes descriptions. And when he talks about people having dark eyes or light in their eyes, or even the illustrations make use of, of light and darkness. So I want you to pay attention to the illustrations and the words as we read. What's my hair doing today? It's kind of a mess. Um, dark and light. Okay. Page seven. There we go. A story. Mistress Trippet and all her family had had their supper. The servants had been fed. Amanda was in the kitchen alone. She had just washed the pots and pans and hung them over the fireplace to dry. She looked in at her brother and sisters on the back stairs. They were asleep. Jimmy's head was against the wall. Meg's head was against his shoulder. It hurt her to see them there like two puppies that nobody wanted. Why couldn't they come into the kitchen and be warm? But Cook wouldn't have it. <clears throat> They'll be under our feet, she said. They've got their own room. Let them stay in it. Amanda had stood up to her. They're not to be shut away in a room all day. It's bad enough to leave them on the stairs. But at least they're next to the kitchen where they won't be so lonely. She looked at them sleeping there. Jimmy was getting to be a big boy. He would be a fine, strong man like his father. But Meg was too small, too thin. Amanda woke them. <coughs> Sorry. She gave them their supper, beef stew with bread and butter. Eat, she said, while I go to Mother. Mother was in a room down the hall. Once all four of them had lived in the room, it had been almost like a home. Now it was a sick room. The little ones could not stay there. Mistress Trippet had put them into a tiny room in the back of the house, and they slept there at night. Sometimes Amanda slept with them. Sometimes she sat up all night, half asleep, half awake by her mother's bed. She carried a lighted candle to the sick room. Mother lay with her eyes closed. She had not left her bed since the day before Christmas. That was the day she had fallen on the stairs. But she had been ill long before that. <clears throat> Amanda sat by the bed and took her mother's hand. She began to tell her about the man who had come from America, but she soon stopped. Why do you talk to her? Cook had said. It's like talking to the wall. She doesn't even know you're there. And it did seem to be true. Ellie looked in. <clears throat> do you want me to sit for a while? Oh, would you, Ellie? I want to put the little ones to bed and talk to them a bit. Amanda went back to Jimmy and Meg. They had eaten their supper. She took them to their room. They had a pallet for a bed. Mistress Trippet had given them some covers. One was a piece of red velvet curtain, faded and old. Jimmy liked to wear it for a cloak and play the fine gentleman. Amanda put the candle on the floor. She sat in the middle of the pallet. Jimmy and Meg lay down on either side. She tucked the covers about them to keep out the cold. 
Now she said, I'll tell you a story. About father and the lion? Asked Jimmy. I've told you that, she said. I've told you and told you. No, you haven't, he said. Not for a long time. So Amanda began. Once a man came to London to seek his fortune. That's father, said Jimmy. Yes, she said. His name was James Freebold, said Jimmy. That's my name, too. That's my real name. He met a beautiful maiden with golden hair. That's mother, said Jimmy. And they were married and had three children. Three fine children, said Jimmy. James Freebold was a carpenter. He could build houses. Do you remember the house we used to have? He built it for us. I know, said Jimmy. Tell the story. There is a land called America, said Amanda. Some call it the New World. It's across the sea, and it's a beautiful land with rivers and trees and birds. Indians live there, and they wear feathers and shoot with bow and arrows. Some men asked Father to go there with them to help build houses. They were going to build houses and towns and live in America in a place called Virginia, said Meg. Yes, you like that name, don't you, Maggie? Father said even if we were poor in London, we would be rich in Virginia. We would have our own fields and gardens. Remember the song he used to sing? She sang very softly. And I'm going to read it because I don't know the tune. There's, there are lands a calling me far across the wide blue sea. And I'll find a home one day in a fair land far away. Tell the story, said Jimmy. Well, you and Meg and I had to wait with Mother. Virginia was a wild place. It wasn't ready for women and children. Father went ahead and we moved to Mistress Trippett's because Mother worked there. You didn't tell at all, said Jimmy. Yes, I did. No, you left out the lion. Oh, said Amanda, there was a door knocker on the house where we used to live. Before Father went away, he took it off and gave it to us. He gave it to me, said Jimmy. He gave it to us all. It was a lion's head. He said it was a lion to guard us while he was gone. Jimmy said again, he gave it to me. From under the covers, he took out a small lion's head made of brass. A brass bar hung from its mouth. <clears throat> he swung the bar back and forth. Don't you want to hear about the sailor man? Asked Amanda. He was here today. He'd been to Virginia and he saw father there. Father has a house and he wants us to come. When? We have to wait. Why? I'm, I'm, I'm reading a YouTube right now. I'm alive. So shh. For mother to get well. Now go to sleep. You too, Meg. She waited until they were asleep before she slipped out of bed. She picked up the candle and went back to mother's room. Go ahead, buddy. <clears throat> All right. Chapter three, Dr. Kreider. Ellie said the next morning, it's been a while since mistress came downstairs. This might be the day. <clears throat> At least once a week, Mistress Trippett surprised them in the kitchen to make sure that all was neat, neat and no one was idle. You know what idle means? It means you're sitting around not doing stuff. Not working. Hey, you're idle. All right. So Miss Trippett, she's a kind of a kind of a hard character. Look at this picture. Look at that face. Oh, Rough. You know her as your teacher. And just after breakfast, they heard the click of her heels on the front stairs. I told you, whispered Ellie. The servants stood like soldiers. Mistress Trippett came down into the kitchen. She looked small. Even in her high heels and her tall red wig, her eyes were like little black beads. Remember when I said to look out for color and light and dark? Black eyes. 
Black beady eyes, even worse. Amanda, don't you have a father? Oh, yes, she answered. He's in America. <clears throat> America? I never knew that. Wait. I skipped a page. Let's go back. Back to here. She swept through the kitchen. She peered into the pantry and the cupboards. She opened the door to the back stairs. Amanda held her breath. Jimmy and Meg were there. Once Mistress Trippet had called them idle brats, but today she almost smiled as she shut the door. The children have grown, she said. How old is the boy? Eight, ma'am, answered Amanda. And the girl? Only five, ma'am. Suddenly, Amanda felt bold. Do you think they might come into the kitchen? Why, certainly, said Mistress Trippet, and she swept off upstairs. Cook's face was like a stone. I'll not have those brats under my feet. You will if mistress says so, said Ellie. Cook struck at her with a spoon. Ellie jumped out of the way. Cook suddenly shouted at Amanda, Don't stand there like a naughty. Fetch some water. Amanda took up the water pail and ran. I was always good in school, in school plays when I was the main person. I don't know why, because I'm so sweet. Anyway, let me keep reading. The pump was on the street, two doors down. She pumped the pail full. It was a heavy wooden pail. Filled with water, it was as much as she could lift. Every few steps, she had to put it down. <clears throat> Someone came up beside her. Amanda, said a voice. A man was there. He was dressed in black. His beard was gray, and there were little lines about his mouth that gave him a friendly look. Ah, uh, friendly. <clears throat> Good day, Dr. Kreider, she said. Child, you can't carry that. He tried to take the pail, but she held on to it with both hands. Thank you, sir, but they wouldn't like it if you carried the water. Who wouldn't? Cook and Mistress Trippet. They didn't know. Mistress looks out the window. She might be looking now. Besides, it's my work. Why? I'm taking Mother's place. I lost my place. <clears throat> I'm taking Mother's place. Amanda carried the pail a few steps and set it down again. Are you here to see Mother? Yes, he said. How is she? Better, I think. Today she looked brighter. Amanda, don't you have a father? <clears throat> oh, yes, she answered. He's in America. America? I never knew that, he said in surprise. Did he go to the colony in Virginia? Yes, sir, he's in Jamestown. America, the new world, said Dr. Kreider. That's an old dream of mine. If I were a young man, I'd be there today. We are all going there, my mother and brother and sister and I, she told him. We're going as soon as mother as well. Are you indeed, he said. They had come to the house and they parted there. He went to the front door and she to the back. It was more than a week before she saw him again. Late one afternoon, she thought she heard his voice in the hall. She asked Ellie, is the doctor here? Ellie looked at Cook. They both looked at her, and neither spoke. I went to see him, said Amanda. May I go? Finish your work, said Cook. The kitchen began to grow dark. Dark, remember? Amanda was lighting candles when Dr. Kreider came into the room. He looked tired. The lines in his face were deeper. Amanda, he said. Yes, sir. Will you come with me? She went with him into the hall. They were alone there. You can go. I must tell you something, he said. She looked into his face. Amanda, your mother is dead. She stood still.
I'm sorry, he said. I did what I could. She felt as if she were choking. She put her hands to her mouth. Did you hear me, child? She nodded. Do you want me to tell your brother and sister? She tried to speak. He asked again, did you hear me? Yes, she whispered. And shall I tell your brother and sister? She spoke then. No, sir. It's for me to tell them. And that is the end of chapter three, a very sad ending to our beginning of this story.